In this video, I will demonstrate how to uh, use the Entity Framework to perform CRUD operations from a MySQL um, database, which now belongs to Oracle. Uh, to begin, I will start a new project of type MBC4, and I'm going to call this EF MySQL uh, CRUD test. And I'm going to make this an internet, um, let's make it a basic application, just because I don't want to deal with all the additional uh, garbage that goes with the uh, internet application. So, uh, Let's add a home controller here. And call it home. Oops, <laughs> wrong one. Start again. Add a controller. And let's call it home. And empty MVC control is fine. And uh, let's also also add a view. Uh, index is fine. And uh, we'll call this uh, home. And under shared layout, this is our uh, uh, layout uh, page. Uh, let's give it some sort of a uh, background color. Um, sure, that should be fine. And uh, sure, we'll add a paragraph. Uh, welcome to our site. And under layout, um, let's add a menu here. Um, we'll call this. Um, link and let's call this uh, employees index employee employees okay basically my uh, controller is uh, Let's call it employee. Well, sure, yeah, I mean, uh, employees is fine, plural. Um, so uh, we haven't created this controller yet, but uh, I just want to have a link here, and uh, we'll put a uh, little space uh, between that and main content. And that's really my uh, style for now. It's not much, but it will have to do. So uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add references um, to the MyJSSI uh, connector uh, assemblies. And uh, in order to get these, uh, you actually have to install the My, uh, MySQL connector, these three right here. Um, you actually have to download it from the uh, MySQL website, uh, dev.mysql.com slash downloads slash connector slash net. And this is an MSI package that you're going to have to run and install in order to get these assemblies. But um, the good news is once you uh, do, you will have, um, you'll have in your uh, program files, um, MySQL, MySQL connector net, six, my version right now is 665 assemblies. There's a version 4.0, which is for uh, .NET 4.0. And this is where you would add the reference uh, from. So um, here, if I, if I say browse, 
that's the path that is fetching it from. So I'm going to select that and say add and say OK. Now when I do that it adds these three assemblies here and the very next thing that I have to do is right click properties and copy set the copy local to true. And uh, same with uh, this guy here. Again, right click properties, true. And this guy here. And these are important to have locally just because when you deploy it to your server, unless you have these uh, cached, you're going to have issues. So uh, the next thing that we have to do after adding these references is to go to web.config and right underneath the connection stream uh, section there's actually um, a uh, connection string that goes in here um, and uh, I actually have that there's a, a, a XML block which I have to put in here and it starts here at system data and ends right here. And uh, notice uh, there's a DB provider factories node. And inside of that, there is an add section that adds the MySQL data provider to this project. And uh, adds the MySQL data, MySQL client, and um, of type, again, MySQL client factory. And uh, my version here is uh, 6650, and uh, this is the public key token for that version. Now, if you have a different version, you will have a different public t uh, key token, which you're going to have to uh, uh, find. So uh, that's pretty much all I have to do here. Now, as far as my database, uh, I'm going to add a folder first and uh, call it the uh, schema and inside of this schema I will add um, an existing file which is my uh, database creation file and I have um, I, I have downloaded these off the web uh, but I will include with the source code of this project just in case someone uh, uh, doesn't have access to it and it's basically a database um, uh, dump, a MySQL database dump, which uh, you can use to recreate this database that I'm uh, working with. So uh, you can restore this uh, MySQL uh, dump file with a, a PHP MyAdmin or uh, really, I mean, any other um, PHP management uh, interface. So uh, now that I have that, the next uh, step for me is to add an, a new item uh, of type data and I select ADO net entity data model. Now because this is the Northwind database, I'm just going to call this Northwind. And I'm going to generate it from the database. Uh, now, that XML uh, data provider uh, code that I wrote, this is where it actually uh, gets used. It adds the MySQL data source uh, item here, which um, I can uh, select and say OK. And when I do, um, it asks me for a server name, local, host, uh, username, uh, say root, password. I'm just going to say safe password and uh, database name is uh, Northwind I'm going to test the connection to see if uh, it works yes it works so uh, yes include the uh, connection string in the uh, file the web.config file Northwind entities is fine here in the Northwind database, I have a whole bunch of uh, tables, which I am going to include. Uh, I don't have any views or stored procedures, but that's okay. And uh, Northwind model is fine. Uh, 
well, let's call this uh, north wind for simplicity and say finish. Now what the entity framework is doing is it's importing all my tables and it's uh, creating classes for them both for uh, data storage and for saving it uh, to the uh, database. And uh, once it's done it should give us a uh, um, basically a data uh, object uh, well it will give us a diagram uh, first of all uh, which has all my uh, uh, tables in and it will also create a Northwind EDMX which will contain if you expand the Northwind uh, node these are all the different classes that I have here um, for example employee and this is where the data gets stored now if you right click on this and say find all references there's really one other place that it gets referenced and that's here inside the Northwind entities you notice there's one for each table uh, one of these DB uh, set and for employees it's this guy right here called employees and uh, this is how the entity framework uh, does CRUD operation uh, to and from the database so with that set um, let's uh, save everything and um, now I do have to look to see what I called um, the controller I called it employees so let's go ahead and create the uh, controller and uh, add controller and we will call this employees here we will select the um, uh, entity framework uh, CRUD generator but it looks like we haven't compiled it yet so let's uh, go ahead and right click and rebuild the solution to make sure that all our assemblies are compiled and under controllers let's try again right click add uh, controller and um, we will call this uh, employees now if I select it we will have all our models so uh, the one that I want is employee and um, I called uh, the other uh, class Northwind entities which I will select for data context class and say add and what this does is it goes in the controller and it cr generates all the CRUD operation to read, update, uh, create and delete uh, records from this uh, database table and it uh, creates action results for each of them uh, in fact two for some of them because uh, for example the create action requires one to render the view uh, to display the form and another one to process what's submitted from the form so um, that's pretty standard auto generated code so there's no need to go through them right now um, so uh, this should be it uh, so let's uh, rebuild it uh, one more time and run it and see uh, what we get so uh, it's rebuilt I'm going to run it so uh, here it is um, this is our site uh, obviously there's not a whole lot on there because we didn't use a theme uh, if I click on my employees uh, action it should take me to the index of um, the uh, database for the employee table and it did notice that all the existing records are being displayed it's not as many uh, records in this database as it is in the SQL my Microsoft SQL version but there's enough to uh, get, you know make a point here so here I've got some fields I can finish uh, fill out uh, and which I will do I'll see if we can cheat a little bit and uh, title CEO title of courtesy demand um, well, I think the rest of it we can just uh, leave. 
see if that goes through and it did so uh, here's our record uh, John Doe and uh, so obviously we can create uh, let's change it to uh, maybe Johnny and uh, see if that saves yep it obviously saves um, and uh, there's also we can get a detail view here which is great and last but not least um, you can you should be able to delete it also which we just did so uh, really uh, it generated all our code for us and that's really what uh, you should get out of this uh, tutorial is that you can use the entity framework to uh, connect to other databases such as MySQL or even a uh, standard Oracle database and uh, perform CRUD operations without having to deal with the nitty-gritty um, uh, of the other underlying code. Uh, just a couple of more uh, hints here. Um, the uh, Northwind database uh, file which I'm including in the source code I obtained from this site right here. Uh, feel free to uh, uh, go there and download it from there or just run the version that I uh, included in the source code. And uh, the other resource again is the uh, .NET connector which uh, you can download from here. You will need it uh, in order to um, um, use the uh, data provider. I hope you found this uh, tutorial useful. Uh, please uh, subscribe and leave uh, any comments or questions you may have uh, or uh, suggestions you may have for future videos. Thanks for watching.